Hello everyone, welcome to videos on elementary differential equation. This is video number 5 for chapter 4. In the previous video, video number 4 of chapter 4, we derived the method of variation of parameters for high order equations. And uh, if you would like to see the derivations, please watch that video. And here we give a summary and then we will take a couple of examples. So the summary is the following. So given that um, y1, y2 to yn, these are n linearly independent functions. They are solutions for the homogeneous equation with zero on the right hand side. Okay, so we say that they form a set of fundamental solutions. And once that is given, then one can find a particular solution for the non-homogeneous equation, meaning the left-hand side is the same, and but the right-hand side we have a source term. A particular solution for that and will take the form that is taken these solutions y1, y2 to yn for the homogeneous equation and we multiply them by functions of u1t, u2t and unt and we add them up. And here these functions u1, u2 to un satisfy the following linear system. And uh, here is a matrix and all the y's are here, y primes here and all the way to y to the n minus 1 prime, all of them. And then the unknown vector is um, derivative of all the ui. So u1 prime, u2 prime to un prime equal to the load vector is all zero except for the last one, which is gt. Okay. So you can solve this, which has a unique solution and you get all the derivatives of the ui's and then you integrate that derivative to recover the ui's and then you can put them in and form a particular solution. Okay, so that's a brief summary. Now let's take a look at some examples. Okay, here's the example. Consider the non-homogeneous differential equation which is given like this. So t to the power 3y triple derivative minus 3t square, y double derivative plus 6t, y derivative minus 6y equal t for t bigger than zero. So there are two parts. Part one show that I have three solutions. y1 is t, y2 is t square, y3 is t cube. All these three our solution for the homogeneous um, equation. Okay, and furthermore, they form a set of fundamental solutions for the homogeneous equation. Once you have shown that, the second part of the uh, example is that now use this to find a particular solution for the non-homogeneous equation, meaning equal t on the right hand side, and then form the general solution for the non-homogeneous equation. Okay, let's get started to solve this problem. Okay, let's look at part one. What do we need to show um, that these form a set of fundamental solution? Well, first part is we have to show that each of them are actually solution to the homogeneous equation. This is easily done because you can just put it in y equal to t here and to see it equals zero for both y1, y2, um, and y3, all of them. Okay, so I skip that detail. Now there's a little bit more to do for that because if you want to form a set of fundamental solution, then you need to show that um, these three um, solutions are linearly independent. So a way to check for that is to compute the Brunskian determinant. So let's do that. Brunskian determinant would be y1, y2, y3. So I write them down and the second um, row will be y1 prime, differentiate that, I get 1. y2 prime, differentiate that, I get 2t. And y3 prime, differentiate that, I get 3t squared. And the last row is uh, 
one more derivative so differentiate one I get zero differentiate this I get two and differentiate this I get 60 okay so I have a three by three matrix and I compute the determinant there are a little bit of detail there to do and if you work that out and you see that you get two times t to the cube which is not zero for t bigger than zero that's the part we're interested in for a solution okay so these three functions are solutions and they're linearly independent therefore they form a set of fundamental solutions for the homogeneous equation okay now let's work on the part two of the problem and we'll take some um, sub steps so now let's first focus on finding a particular solution of the form so following our derivation and we know we will take the particular solution to be this form where u1 u2 u3 are functions of t and then let's plug in the y1 y2 y3 because we have them so it's t t square and t cube so this is the form of the particular solution Okay, so we can use that formula we derived, which is this kind of a um, Voronskian um, determinant, the, the, the matrix to compute the Voronskian determinant, which is here. And the unknown vector is the derivatives of all these u's. And uh, the right hand side will be 0, 0, and this will be the g. Okay, so I say a word about the g here. Um, if you remember, the g on the right hand side is written as t. But remember, for the higher derivative term, there is a t cube in front. So we have to write it in the form that fits the formula that is divided both sides by t cube. And therefore, the g on the right hand side is t to the negative 2. Okay? Okay, so um, then. Um, this is um, just a equation to solve. You can do Gaussian elimination, whatever is your favorite method. Treat all these as given constants and treat this as the unknown and solve for it. Okay, if you um, work out the details, a little bit work there, and then we can find the solution. U1 prime, U2 prime, U3 prime, equal to that. So U1 prime will be one over two T, u2 prime is negative 1 over t square and u3 prime is 1 over 2t cube okay so um this is the first step to get um u1 u2 u3 prime and then one can recover the u1 u2 and u3 by just integrating each terms in t and add any convenient um, integration constant as you like Okay, so that's the part. step B for question two, is to integrate all these u's and to get u1, u2, u3. So the first one will be half ln of t, and the second one is 1 over t, and then u3 is um, negative t to the negative 2 over 4. Okay, you can easily differentiate each and to see that they match the u1 prime, u2 prime, u3 prime on the previous page. Okay, so once we have those u's, and basically we have the particular solution, so let's put it in. So y1 times u1 plus y2 times u2 plus y3 times u3. Okay, and let's directly plug it in. And then you can simplify a little bit because this gets to be a t and this becomes negative one fourth of a t and together becomes three quarters of t and then the first term is here and this solution is valid for t bigger than zero now on um, looking at um, this um, solution um, we notice that it contains this term 3 over 4 times t and that's some constant times t so we see that um, we already have the first solution y1 of t equals t so it already takes care of 
this expression so we can drop it and we can simply take the particular solution to be just the first term so t over 2 times ln of t for t bigger than 0 okay so at this stage um, it would be useful if this shall be an exam and you have extra time it would be very useful to plug this one back into the non-homogeneous equation to see that it actually is a particular solution it will not take that much work and it reassures you so you can be assured that you got the correct answer okay once one has all that then we can form the general solution by um, adding them up onto the um, general solution okay so um, um, the, the general solution for the homogeneous equation is here c1t c2t square c3t cube that's y1 y2 y3 and plus the particular solution okay so then we completed the problem we solved all the questions okay so um okay so that was actually the only example we would go through so let me end the video with uh, some remark um, so for this problem notice that we give the general solution for the homogeneous equation for higher order equations with variable coefficient in general I want to say that finding this general solution with variable coefficient all those equations is not easy at all okay and um, we actually haven't learned uh, any specific ways of finding a solution there but if they are given then we can go ahead and form the particular solution okay and the second remark will be um there is one case that we can find the general solution that is uh, when you have the constant coefficient the equation has constant coefficient then you can form the characteristic equation and you can find the roots and then each root will give you one solution and this we talked about um, a couple of videos earlier okay so um, that's that and that's all I have to say for this video and that's also all I have to say for this chapter then we conclude this chapter and next video we'll start chapter 5 we'll talk about new topics I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.